What's up everyone? After months and months of design, prototype, and currently testing, I'm proud to present to you our first of many quads, the Flight Club Tokyo X, formerly known as the FX210. Um, it took me many tries before I came up with this design. These days, it's really hard to come up with something new. Um, to give you an idea, I designed six frames before I before Tokyo, but ended up scrapping them all. They were just too similar to something that was already out there, and I struggled for a long time to come up with something um, unique. So the Tokyo X is a 210mm True X frame. The frame itself looks pretty clean and simplistic, but let's take a closer look at all the design details. Um, the biggest goals I wanted to achieve when I designed this frame was protection, easy to build or work on, and speed. Um, so the three most common areas that need protection on a quad are the camera, uh, video transmitter, and the motors. So as you can see on this frame, the camera is designed to sit just behind the, the canopy, this lip right here, that protects the lens uh, horizontally and vertically. And it's mounted on a bendable bracket that I'll show you when we look inside. So this, this lip right here takes most of the hits and on extreme impacts, the metal bracket on the inside will bend. Um, and I made sure to put a lot of protection around the, the motor guards or the motors right here. Um, this simple little shape has worked very well in protecting the motors. Um, none of my testers nor I have d damaged any motors. And we've been flying on concrete and abandoned warehouses and all our motors have survived. Um, and then the VTX and the antenna mount was probably the most difficult problem I had to solve. Um, most quads mount the antenna pointing up or directly back. Both of these methods have issues. If you point the antenna straight up, the antenna becomes the only thing that touches the ground when the, land, when the quad lands upside down. This puts a lot of stress on the SMA connector. And if you, point the antenna, uh, if you point the antenna directly back, you're putting it right into the props. On the Tokyo, the antenna points down at a 15 degree angle. I don't know if you can see that, but this serves three purposes. It gets the antenna out of the way of the props. It tucks the antenna between the, the two back arms and the motors. And it prevents and it takes the antenna, it prevents the antenna from ever touching the ground. So if the quad ever lands upside down, um, the antenna never touches the, the ground. So there's no stress on the SMA connector. So this way there's very little little chance of damaging the antenna or VTX. And you can see there's access ports cut into the frame so you, you can easily change the VTX channel right here or get to the flight controller USB on the side and on the other side also. One of my favorite designs on the Tokyo is the way the canopy is mounted to the frame. It uses a simple two screw system to hold down the canopy that's virtually impossible for the canopy to come off. Using just two small standoffs, you don't ever have to worry about bent standoffs again. Um, to get inside the canopy, all you do is unscrew the two screws that are on, on the bottom of the quad. First, I'm gonna remove these antennas, antenna ports. Normally, I just tuck these antennas inside the, the canopy. Um, for a small race quad, you don't need to have these outside anyway, but if you can if you want so to get inside you just move these two screws and then you have the entire quad right here for you to work on this makes building the quad super easy or doing any field um, field repairs uh, quick quick and simple so the Tokyo X is designed to be used with cameras like the Foxier Arrow or the Runcam Swift both of these cameras come with a metal bracket like this that lets you lock in the angle of the camera. And on extreme impacts, if the lip of the canopy doesn't um, take up take all the impact, this little metal bracket will bend backwards to save your camera. So and if, if that ever happens, all you do is just bend the, the, the bracket back and everything is good. So um, 
I answer emails helping people building quads on a daily basis and one of the most troublesome issues in building is uh, vibration. So vibration from the motors can wreak havoc on the sensors of the flight controller. Uh, up until now all quads um, mount the flight controller stack just using um, four three millimeter holes spaced um, 30 and a half millimeters apart. Um, mounting vibration prone flight controllers directly on the frames can cause all sorts of problems. Um, O-rings and soft motor mounts help but they don't always work. So I invented a system called butter mount. With the butter mount, the screws used to, to mount the flight controller are surrounded by a super soft silicone, so nothing hard is touching the frame. Um, all the vibrations are squashed before it travels up to the flight controller. So, so none of our prototype Tokyos have had any issues with flight controller vibration. Um, we've tested this on very sensitive um, flight controllers like the KISS, uh, KISS FC and the LUX. All were hard mounted on standoffs using just, um, well, hard mounted on standoffs without using soft motor mounts or O-rings and everything has been buttery smooth. I'll remove one of these and I'll kind of show you what's, oops, what's under this butter mount thing. So I'm just using a, a 12, meter, 12 millimeter screw going through this mount and as you can see this mount is completely surrounding the screw so nothing hard is touching um touching the the frame so even a lot of detail went into making the uh, four millimeter carbon fiber plate um, all the outer edges are completely chamfered so there's no sharp edges or uh, no sharp edges to cut um, wires or battery straps um, and these three holes right here are countersinked so that way your the bottom of the frame is completely flat that way no button heads or button screws are popping out to uh, rip apart um, batteries or anything like that also the frames are rotated 45 degrees so that the carbon fibers run down the length of the arms I don't know if you can see that in the in the video but this makes it the absolute strongest way to cut a frame. Um, all these little details makes producing the frames more expensive, but I didn't want to cut any corners in making the best possible quad. So designing this quad was probably the most, probably one of the hardest things I've ever done. Um, partly because of my OCD. Uh, this canopy took me easily 200 hours of CAD and countless revisions tweaking things to the tenths of a millimeter just to make sure everything fit right. Not to mention the hours of printing prototypes before I came up with the design that I like. But I couldn't be happier with the result. Um, I think after you fly to Tokyo, your perception of quadcopters will change. So, enough talking. Let's see what the Tokyo X is capable in the hands of our flight club team pilot Envy Astro Ivan Rodriguez.